Assalamu alaikum everyone. Allah yisad awkatkum. Inshallah, you are all having a smooth Ramadan thus far. Today's episode is about personal growth in Ramadan. Based on the Ramadan goals I have chosen for myself, how should I grow as a Muslim? What does it actually look like to accomplish those goals during Ramadan? This episode is going to be a little bit more of a reflection and less of a tactical episode where I list out 10 ways to grow as a Muslim during Ramadan. The inspiration for this episode comes from a reflection that I had a few days ago. I went to the mosque for Tarawih one night and I spoke to a friend of mine who just so happens to be a Qari, someone who recites Quran, they are a Hafiz of the Quran, they have it memorized. And then that same night, I had a conversation with a brother who had just recently found Islam. He was still in the early stages of finding his foundation as a Muslim. And what really struck me was realizing how those two brothers were in such different stages of their journeys as Muslims. I thought that was so beautiful and so inspiring seeing the various stages of walking the path of Islam and how everybody's journey that Allah has written for us is just perfectly perfectly timed. In the same mosque, we have one brother who was born and raised Muslim, who has been studying the Quran his entire life, so much so that he literally has it memorized and can recite it for the masses. In that same space, you find a brother who just discovered Islam and had just recently taken his shahada. So his slate is completely clean, slowly building this new life as a Muslim, subhanAllah, I was just in awe. It's not a matter of who's better or worse. Rather, it's just a beautiful example of Allah's perfect timing that is unique to the individual. And so when I think about the question of how do I grow as a Muslim during Ramadan, I feel like the most appropriate way to answer that question is based on where you are as a Muslim. Every Muslim's journey to becoming the best servant they can be is unique. So while we all might have the same goals, how we accomplish those goals are going to look very different based on where we are as Muslims. As we all know, Ramadan is a month of growth and being a better Muslim when we finish Ramadan. It's not a month of stagnation and plateauing our Iman or our faith. This is not the time where we say, I'll start it tomorrow. I'll start praying tomorrow. No, Ramadan is a time where we say, I'm going to pray right now. I'm going to fast right now. It's a month where we hold ourselves accountable and take advantage of every single moment in our day. It is a month of stepping it up a notch, literally. Like imagine a notch and turning it one level up. If you have never prayed the five daily prayers, the fard prayers, this Ramadan is the time for you to start. If you pray the five fard prayers but you've never prayed sunnah, Try praying sunnah this month. If you pray sunnah and farad, but you don't do qiyam and tahajjud, the night prayers, do qiyam and tahajjud this Ramadan. If you go to tarawih and generally only pray four rak'ah, pray eight rak'ah this Ramadan. Identify where you currently are in regards to a specific form of ibadah, a specific form of worship, like prayer. Identify where you currently are and step it up one notch. If you feel confident stepping it up two notches, do that. But the important thing is that you step it up at least one notch to where when the end of Ramadan hits, you are better than who you were when we started. Another example might be the Quran and your relationship with the Quran. If you've never held or opened up the Quran, open up the Quran this Ramadan. To give a personal example, I can read and write in Arabi. I'm not amazing at it. I can't read it like a native speaker, but I can generally get through the Quran in Arabi. And that is me identifying what stage I currently am at in regards to a form of ibadah, like reading the Quran. One step up for me, and this is something that I'm actually working on this Ramadan, is developing my tajweed, the pronunciation of the Quran in Arabi. I speak colloquial, rural Palestinian Arabic, which is vastly different from Fusha, the Arabic in the Quran, the classical Arabic. I studied classical Arabic in my university for a few years, and it's very basic. It's not advanced in any way. I do not speak classical Arabic fluently at all. I can kind of understand it, but when I speak Arabic, I speak Palestinian rural dialect. And so when I recite the Quran, 
I don't recite it 100% perfect based on the vowels and the rules of reading the Quran properly. And so this Ramadan, I've been working on developing that skill, reciting the Quran with Tajweed. Not perfect tajweed, okay, but better tajweed. And so by the end of this Ramadan, I'm at least somewhat better at reading the Quran with tajweed than I was when I first started. Base your Ramadan goals on your path and where you are as a Muslim. My goal to read with better tajweed is based on where I currently am. But that's going to look very different from you. You might read the Quran way better than I can, or you might know less Quran than I do. Develop your Ramadan goals based on your path. And when I say path, I don't just mean that figuratively. For me, when I think of my growth as a Muslim, I think of path, a literal path. Like I visualize a path in front of me. Let's do a little collective visualization. So imagine you are out in the boondocks in the middle of nowhere, this huge open field covered in grass. There is a path in front of you. You are standing on this path, and in the far, far distance, you see the end of the path, your destination. This is the visual representation of your path as a Muslim, and working towards becoming the best servant of Allah that you could possibly be. The more you walk down this path, the closer you get to the destination, the closer you are to Allah. And every mile or so, there is a line in the ground. There is a checkpoint, and when you cross that line, it means you accomplished a milestone in your journey to being the best Muslim that you can be. When you started praying the five daily prayers, you crossed one milestone. When you started fasting, you passed another milestone. When you learned to stop worrying and stressing about tomorrow, and you learned to trust Allah with whatever tomorrow brings, you passed another milestone. Now the thing is, us Muslims, we all have the same destination. We all want to get to that same point of being the best servant that we could possibly be. However, your journey, your path to your destination is unique to you. Every path is different. One person's path in front of them might be paved with bricks. Walking on bricks is pretty easy. It's pretty flat. When it rains, the water kind of just flows off to the side. But this brick paved road is super curvy. It has these really drastic twists and turns. Sometimes it goes up and then sometimes it just drops really quick down, but it is pretty nicely paved with bricks. The next person might have a path that is straight. It's completely flat. It doesn't go up. It doesn't go down. No left, no right. Just perfectly straight, perfectly flat, but it's a dirt path. It's not paved with bricks. It's just a dirt path. Ever so often there are pebbles and sharp gravel on the ground that hurts to walk on and when it rains it gets really muddy and it just gets really gross to walk in but it's flat and straight compared to the curvy brick road. Then another person might have a path paved with I don't know white marble and have handrails and a roof or a covering the entire pathway which sounds great but their path is five times longer than the path of the dirt road and the brick road. So it's nice and shaded, but it's way longer than the other path. Everybody's path is going to be different. Each has its own unique difficulties, different struggles. Allah gives us all very different lives. So our paths to him are going to reflect that. Everybody has their own different levels of support, of resources, of opportunities that help us to become better Muslims. Work on crossing your next milestone, not somebody else's. We all know the saying, Allah guides whom he wills. And when I think about that, I also think about the when that guidance will come. There are those who were born and raised Muslim and have been praying since day one because they were born into a Muslim family who also practices Islam on a daily basis compared to another individual who was born and raised in a Muslim house, but a Muslim house that wasn't practicing and he or she didn't start praying until she was like 17 or another individual who didn't discover Islam until they were 35 and that's when they started praying. Everybody has their own journey. Today I think is like the seventh day of Ramadan, we're already one week in. If you haven't started working on your goal or haven't even set your goal, start tomorrow. Tomorrow's a new day. It's better to start tomorrow than to not start at all. Find your motivation to make it to your next milestone in your path. I feel like sometimes we often get caught up in where we think other Muslims are 
in their journey. Like when we go to the mosque, you just assume everybody woke up and prayed Fajr on time this morning. Everybody looks so focused in their prayers, but how come I'm not focused in my prayers? Especially with the rise of social media and seeing everybody on Instagram and TikTok, at least outwardly, looking like they're so devoted to Islam. I want to be more like them. But we are not on the same path. And sometimes that can get discouraging. It just makes you feel like you're a really crappy Muslim and it seems like everybody around me is doing such great things, but I'm stuck where I am right now. And sometimes you just plateau as a Muslim. You're not getting better, you're not getting worse, you're just stuck at where you are right now. You're just like, well, dang. <laughs> we have to remind ourselves we are all at different stages. No two humans, no two Muslims are at the exact same stage in their journey to becoming a better Muslim. I think oftentimes we also end up getting overwhelmed with goals during Ramadan because there's just so much to work on. Or if you already feel low, thinking about all that you should be doing can be paralyzing and you feel like you don't even know where to start because there's just so much I have to work on. But you're not going to be the perfect Muslim in one Ramadan. Focus on one objective at a time. And to offer a little bit more tactical advice, be better at tracking your progress and hold yourself accountable to that progress. If your goal is to read the entire Quran or half the Quran this Ramadan, take the exact number of pages that you want to read, divide it up by the number of days and say, okay, I have to read 10 pages a day to accomplish my goal. If you miss one of the days or something comes up, make it up the next day. But hold yourself accountable by tracking it. In the end, you are exactly where Allah planned for you to be in this very moment. In you listening to this podcast, wherever you are in your life as a Muslim, that is what Allah has planned for you. All you can do right now is work to be better. We are never going to be the perfect Muslim or the perfect servant of Allah. But it is our duty to strive to be the best Muslim that we can be. Inshallah, this Ramadan is a Ramadan of just full-blown growth and motivation for all of us. I pray that you guys are all able to better find your paths this Ramadan. Stay motivated and stay humble, inshallah. You guys take care and I will talk to you all in the next episode. Assalamu alaikum.